When we use the web, you would think that we understand how it works, because after all, we human beings built it, but it's actually a mystery to many people, even the experts who operate this thing, why it does what it does. I'm Mark Cravella. I'm a professor in the computer science department at Boston University. As a computer scientist, my research looks for insight into how complex systems behave. One system that we've looked a lot at is uh, the internet. Does the internet work well for us? Is it secure? Can we understand why it's not working? How do we even break that down into pieces that are understandable? A lot of times that involves standing around a whiteboard trying to come up with simple equations that describe what we see in the data or the way that we expect the system to behave. I typically have three or four students who are doing research with me at any given time. So you'll sit around with them and try to figure out what the right way to capture an idea is. The real excitement comes when you make a discovery, and this relates to the poem very, very much. The real excitement comes rarely, but it comes when something complex suddenly unfolds and becomes understandable. So I first encountered this poem, For Once Then Something, by Robert Frost, when I was a senior in high school. Over the years, as I progressed into my career as a researcher, this poem just started to really resonate with me. I don't know that he had a sense of scientific research in his mind when he wrote this, but I think it's a poem that, for me, really captures a lot about the research experience. For Once Then, Something by Robert Frost. Others taught me, with having knelt at well curbs, always wrong to the light, so never seeing deeper down in the well than where the water gives me back in a shining surface picture, me myself in the summer heaven, godlike, looking out of a wreath of fern and cloud puffs. Once, when trying with chin against a well curb, I discerned as I thought beyond the picture, through the picture, a something white, uncertain, something more of the depths, and then I lost it. Water came to rebuke the too clear water. One drop fell from a fern, and lo, a ripple shook whatever it was there at the bottom, blurred it, blotted it out. What was that whiteness? Truth? A pebble of quartz? For once then something. So I think you can see how the poet somehow seems to understand what it's like to be a researcher. You get the sense at the beginning of him, he's leaning over the water, yes. he's seeing the reflection, behind him and can't see through the water. At least to me, it feels like it has a lot of connection to what we all do. Right. Studying data or a system for a long period of time and not making progress, this business of, about kneeling at well curbs to me, that part of the poem sets me in mind of my daily life and how you sort of struggle. You struggle with people's expectations. You know, he says, others have taunted me, right? Well. You know, we don't necessarily get taunted, but we certainly wonder, you know, how are we doing? Are we succeeding, right? I love this idea of being wrong to the light. You really need to turn it around and understand this problem or this data from, exact, from literally a different angle. And it really resonates with the experience of exploring and seeking a better way to understand something. It's a poem that keeps me thinking on those days when I'm not getting anywhere, and it's a poem that resonates for me in those rare moments when I'm, I'm experiencing that thrill of having discovered something, understood something.